All right, so Adam's done taking the uh, clutches off of the 600. Now we're working on the 800, and uh, we'll go from there. But he's going to remove the primary, and uh, and then are you going to be removing the secondary on the 800 right now? Yeah, I'll or? take both okay. of them off just right. to help people and show people what's going on. Okay. So in this setup here, pretty much all of these machines are the same. They run primarily the exact same clutch. Uh, this is CVTEX LP3 secondary. This is their trail block primary. In this machine, we've got an 18 millimeter, uh, which is a left hand thread bolt, followed by a 30 millimeter, also left hand thread bolt, and a 32 millimeter right hand standard lefty loosey bolt. Now, in these machines, if you've got to take the secondary off, the easiest thing to do is spread the secondary open to get the belt loose. It's actually really tough to get these things off without spreading the, the clutch open. This is a standard six millimeter bolt. These holes here are threaded. And when you take this six millimeter bolt and you thread it in here, it'll actually spread the clutch open. So this bolt threads in here and pushes against the back to spread the clutch open. Once you get the belt loose, you can... Now, if you're just doing primary work, the primary will come off without taking the belt off, the outer half of the primary. But if you've got to pull everything off, having the belt loose makes things a lot more simpler. So on this bolt here, it is a left-hand thread, so it's actually right to loosen it. And this bolt threads out of the crank and then has to thread back through the center of the clutch because the center of the clutch is actually threaded as well. So once we get it through the center of the clutch, the bolt will come out. Once the bolt comes out, then we've got the 30 millimeter nut, which is also uh, left hand threads. And this bolt comes out and there's a little spring tension here, normally about a quarter inch to a half an inch is normal spring tension. So the clutch will pop off just a little bit. You pull the outer half of the clutch off here, you can set it down. You see you've got a spring, you've got a series of washers. These washers are very important. They gotta stay there. You, they will come off. I mean, I don't want to scare you. They can come off, but they do need to remain on the clutch. You don't need to take them off and throw them away. I've seen some people doing that, and that's not advisable at all. But now you got the outer half off. It's pretty easy with the secondary spread open to get the belt off. The belt will come over the primary shaft and loop over the secondary. In most cases, this is pretty easy. It is kind of tight. You want to roll the clutch and get the belt free. Another easy way to get this dude off is our 32 millimeter or one and seven sixteenths lefty loose. You pull this guy off. The whole secondary will actually slide right off. If we have to, we get the belt up out of the way. That is a tight fit. Ooh. Now the clutches are off. Now, some of these are going to come with shims. I've seen some with a really thin 20,000 shim. I've seen some with a 40,000 shim. I've seen some with shims stacked. These shims are correcting the belt alignment from the transmission to the primary crankshaft. You definitely don't want to lose those shims. Whatever you have needs to stay on there. That, that's the that's the factory alignment to correct the two clutches together. So if you've got a shim, leave it on there. Definitely don't lose it. So after working on these machines, which we've done a lot of these machines over the course of the last few years, and I think about 2016 when they went to this new style clutch, the CV Tech Trail Block Primary and the LP3 Secondary, we've done a lot of work with them. We've been working with these clutches since 2008, so I know a lot about them. And them choosing that clutch setup was really, in my opinion, a good it was a good go for those guys. The, the clutches are, are very easy to work on. They're very tunable. They're, they're very durable. You get a lot of mileage out of them. Uh, typically, I, I, was telling, um, I was telling them earlier, you know, we typically get four to 5,000 miles out of one of these clutches between rebuilds. So they're not, they're, they're not hard to work on. They don't, you don't take a, they don't take a lot of maintenance. You don't have to do very much to them. And to get good gains out of them, we don't have to do a lot to them as well. The vast majority of everything we did today can be done by a normal dude with normal tools, an impact in 30 minutes. The vast majority of people don't have to have crazy special pullers. You don't have to have a ton of mechanical experience with maybe a few videos we got online. Now you'll be able to see 
that you can you can do this with if you can change brake pads you can do all of this stuff in 30 minutes and by doing these clutch kits springs weights secondary we've got helix options we've got lots of different things and each machine may need something a little different so a guy with 26 inch tires that wants to outrun his buddy we, we've got a drag race setup we got a different helix angle we've got a different secondary spring we got a different primary spring and different weights and doing that setup you can get really good gains out of a machine but not have any adverse effects you'd be nice acceleration fast top speed cool belt temps and the clutches won't be unreliable that you won't change the reliability whatsoever in in the machines like we worked on today all of them are running bigger tires Larger tires take something different than smaller tires. We've got different springs, different, diff we, we clock the secondaries differently. We put different weights in them. We do a few different tricks to make these style machines work better and work more efficiently. So we're gonna run more secondary spring tension. We're gonna run more primary spring tension. We're gonna change the weights. The cruising RPMs are gonna be a little different, but in order to get a clutch setup that operates smoothly, has the proper belt pinch, has instant throttle response. You need to clutch the machine differently and that requires different springs, different helixes, different weights in order to balance the clutch out for this particular type, style of driving. So what you may notice from just a 100% stock machine, these particular setups like we did today for 30 inch mud tires, 28 inch mud tires, the cruising RPM may be 300, 400 RPMs higher. But the reason is, is that we're tricking the clutch into holding itself in a lower gear ratio longer. So we're, we're making the clutch work kind of like tow haul mode does in a pickup truck. Instead of the clutch being in fourth gear and bogging down, we've got it in third gear pulling more RPMs. So, so the balance of the clutch comes into play here with the springs we choose, the weights we choose, how tight we torsion the secondary spring, and what helix angles we use but we've got setups figured out for pretty much everybody, every riding style, and uh, just a phone call away, we can help you out. So the 600, although it's a, it's a great looking machine, and it, it has decent power, the first thing I noticed when I got on it, and probably a lot of folks will notice, was the lack of direct drive from your throttle to what the tires are doing. And, and that's one of the things that the CVTs are really good at and capable of you can give it throttle you hear the motor rev up you feel acceleration the CVTs are really nice in that when they're tuned properly they they work pretty flawlessly they're really they're really efficient well this thing for some reason when I got on it you give it throttle and you feel it you, you hear the motor rev up and you're giving it more throttle but you're not getting the mile per hour and rate of acceleration behind it clearly the clutch is kind of mushy is probably the best sound or the, the best way i can describe it it's your throttle response doesn't exactly equate to rate of acceleration so i would be five percent throttle it would sound like i'm at 5,000 rpm and it would barely move but once it finally got going i would be 50 percent throttle at 5,000 RPM to only do 10 miles an hour. It was really weird. It just didn't give you a sense of giving the gas and it going. It was really, it was kind of strange, but I knew exactly what was wrong as soon as I drove it, and I guessed it pretty much right out the gate. I knew it had a super soft primary spring and super light weights. So when you gave it gas, the clutch is trying to upshift and gain gear ratio. So when you gave it just 5% throttle, the clutch would upshift in second and third gear and it almost it almost would bog the motor down even though it had a lot of rpms it just wasn't physically pulling so in, in something like this is very simple to fix that primary spring secondary spring we changed the secondary clock uh, we changed the second se secondary settings and it was a very easy and effective thing to do the clutch worked perfectly i mean that that machine was daylight and dark difference in the response the power when you give it gas it goes and it actually churns the tires or oh, you can climb a hill without it bogging down you know the test that we did you know I think I proved that that machine will do 
whatever you want it to do when it's calibrated properly and it's not bad for just maybe everyday Joe but for performance junkies guys who are looking yeah. for the most power the best performance the, the best throttle response yeah it left a lot on the table so I think you know with just minimal changes we can really make that thing rock and roll all right, so y'all were just given a load of great information on the CV Tech clutches. Uh, Adam, man, I told you he knows his stuff and uh, a great guy running a great company for clutch work. And uh, man, I, I can't wait to show you in the next video the test results and kind of the differences, some before and after tests. Uh, so be looking for that. I didn't want this video to be too long, but I'll try to post the uh results after uh, uh just give me a couple days we'll get that posted but uh listen go back watch how to disassemble uh because you're going to be able to call adam uh go to go to his website the link will be in the, the description and uh you can go to the go there go to the website uh email him or you can call him with the number provided on his website and say hey look i got a c4 600 or or 800 or 500 or 400 or even uh, a side-by-side -side and say, hey, uh, I, want, I want some clutch work done. Same thing that you did to Blake's with Real Talk Power Sports and uh, he can get you hooked up. He can send it to you and, uh, and then you can, you can do the clutch work yourself. If you have a few tools, you can do it. And also in the, in the description, I'm going to uh, tag a, a link to one of Adam's videos where he shows you how to reclock the secondary. Okay, so once you get the once you get everything off, you'll you'll need to watch this video that Adam shows how to reclock the secondary. Also, I'm going to make one as well uh, in a future video when I take apart a C Force 400. I'm going to video that and take it apart, and I'm going to install the clutch kit myself. So that'll be uh, within a week or so from now. But listen, if you want one of these kits, go to his website, or if you are within driving distance of Main Street Cycle, uh, they're going to start stocking these kits for everything that they have in, in store with CF Moto. So uh, if you're interested, you can call them up, get ready to buy one if you want one for your four-wheeler or side-by-side. So listen, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Click the bell so that you can be notified when I post a video. I try to do it every two to three days, sometimes sooner. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't miss out on the results. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. God bless.